This video is part of a series on a first course in modelling analysis and control. And now we begin an introduction to feedback loop analysis. We discovered in the previous video that feedback changes behaviour. But in order to undertake systematic design, we need to understand how. So here we're going to introduce some simple and systematic analysis tools for feedback loops. And we're only going to focus on the most elementary of loops, so we're going to assume perfect sensing and no actuator dynamics. So you'll notice we're get, getting rid of this block, and these two blocks we're going to basically replace by a single block. And this is quite common in a first course. There are three main components in a simple loop which need to be defined mathematically. There's a summing junction, so you can see the picture of what it looks like, and in simple terms it's just addition or subtraction based upon what signs you can see on the arrows coming into the junction. Transfer function block, which we've done in the materials on Laplace. So here for this block you can see this symbol implies that y equals g u. And finally, takeoff points. So if you have two lines which are joined, and you can see the arrows, they basically are assumed to be carrying the same signal. Now, let's identify those three points in this block diagram. You can see a takeoff point there, which means that this line going backwards must also contain y. You can see a summing junction there, which tells you that the signal e has got to be r minus y. You can see a transfer function block, so we get u equals m times e, and another transfer function block, so we get y equals g times u. So in summary, analysing this block diagram, we end up with three equations, e equals r minus y, u equals m e, and y equals g u. Now what we want to do is find the relationship between all the signals entering the loops and signals within the loop. So I, the relationships between R and E, or R and U, or R and Y. And we'll begin by looking at the relationship between R and Y. Now to do this, all we have to do is solve the three equations above as simultaneous equations, eliminating the variables we're not interested in. So first, I write the three equations here in a column. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, going to take the variable E and eliminate it by plugging it in there. And there you, you can see I've now reduced myself to two equations. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the variable u and plug it in there. And you see that now reduces me to one equation, which has the input to the loop r and the variable I'm interested in y. Now I can rearrange this and I get the expression y equals gm over 1 plus gm times r. Now, this slide is almost the same, but the only difference is now we're going to try and solve for the signal E. But it's the same process. We have simultaneous equations, and we just need to eliminate one variable at a time, but we're going to eliminate different variables. So you see, we start with the same three equations here, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by eliminating the variable Y. So I'm going to take that variable Y and plug it in there. And you can see I now get two equations. And then what I'm going to do is take this variable u and plug it in there, and I end up with one expression now linking r and e. And I can solve that and get e equals 1 over 1 plus gm times r. Now just for completeness, you can do it. You will find that u equals m over 1 plus gm times r. So in summary, you should be confident in deriving these three expressions. The same methodologies and insights allow easy extension to more complicated loops, even though we're not discussing those. So these are the three expressions. You should know the dependence of y on r, the dependence of u on r, and the dependence of e on r. Some numerical examples then. Find the closed loop transfer function between r and y for the given g and m. And this is just a reminder of the expression we're using. So the closed loop transfer function is gm over 1 plus gm. So what I'm going to write is gc equals 0 0.2 divided by s plus 0 0.1, all divided by 1 plus 0 0.2 
over s plus 0 0.1. It looks a little bit messy. But then if I multiply through by the denominator top and bottom, I'm going to get 0 0.2 over s plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2. Now what do you notice? The closed loop and open poles are different. So the open loop pole is at minus 0 0.1 and the closed loop pole you can see here is at minus 0 0.3. Next example, find the closed loop transfer function between R and E. So this was the expression we're interested in. The closed loop transfer function is given by 1 over 1 plus GM. So I can write GCE equals 3 times 0 0.5 over S plus 2 over 1 plus, and I'll just do the multiplication, 1.5 over S plus 2. And again, if I multiply through by the denominator, I get 1.5. I've made a mistake there. I do apologise. I should have just had a 1 in the numerator. These things do happen. Good for you to see the odd mistake, probably. Right, so let's carry on. So multiply through by the denominator and we get s plus 2 over s plus 2 plus 1.5. And again, what do you notice? The closed loop and open poles are different. So the open loop pole at minus 2 and the closed loop pole at minus 3.5. Another example. Find the closed loop transfer function between R and Y for this example here. So let's write it down. We're going to end up with GC equals 4 over S minus 2 over 1 plus 4 over S minus 2, which is going to be 4 over s minus 2 plus 4, and there's a very key observation here. You'll see that the open loop is unstable. Look, there's an s minus 2 factor, so the pole is in the right half plane. However, look at the closed loop. The pole is now at minus 2. It's in the left half plane, so it's stable. So we've had a big change in behaviour by closing the loop. Shortcut for algebra. It's possible to write down the closed loop transfer function quickly using some simple analysis. So if I assume that g is given by n over d, then you can see what I can do. There's my closed loop transfer function, gm over 1 plus gm. And then I replace the gm by n over d here and here. And what do you notice? I end up with this ni nice, neat expression, n over d plus n. So in other words, I can write down the closed loop transfer function by inspection, which avoids a lot of the messy algebra on the previous slides. The closed loop pole polynomial is just the sum of the open loop denominator and the open loop numerator. So where is the slowest closed loop pole for this system here? And I'm going to exploit this expression. So the closed loop pole polynomial is just the sum of the denominator and the numerator. So I get s plus 2 s plus 5 plus 2. Now, this is going to give you s squared plus 7s plus 10 plus 2, which is s squared plus 7s plus 12, which you can factorise by inspection as s plus 3, s plus 4. So again, what do you notice? The closed loop and open poles are different. In the open loop, I had minus 2 and minus 5. And in the closed loop, I've got minus 3 and minus 4. What is the closed loop steady state gain? So what you need to remind yourself is that system gain is basically defined by setting s equals 0. So g of 0 for open loop, gc of 0 for closed loop. And I've reminded you here of what the closed loop transfer function is given us. So I can simply write gc of 0 equals g of 0 times 0 0.4 because that's what m is, over 1 plus g of 0 times 0 0.4, and you can see the answer reduces to 4 ninths. Now, notice again, this is very different from the open loop gain, which in this case was 2. What is the closed loop damping ratio? So again, I'm going to use this shortcut that I can get the closed loop transfer function as n over d plus n, but I'm only interested here in the pole polynomial if I want to get the damping ratio. So the pole polynomial is given at s squared 
plus 5s plus 4 plus 3. So that's the d plus n. I then use my normalised form and I find that omega n squared equals 7. The 7 comes here from the 4 plus 3. 2 zeta omega n equals 5. That comes from the 5 there. And therefore the closed loop damping ratio is 5 over 2 root 7. Use some MATLAB then. It's somewhat tedious doing pen and paper computations, especially for high order transfer functions. So now is a good time to reinforce your MATLAB skills, and in particular, to look at tools such as tf.m for creating transfer function objects, feedback.m to find a closed loop transfer function, pzmap.m, which gives you the poles and zeros of a transfer function, and step.m, which gives you step responses. Now, there's lots of help on these and other things in the further resources, but what I'll do is I'll give you a very quick illustration now using MATLAB. So, you can see here, I've got some of the um, expressions ready, and I'll just open the command window. So, here's an example of TF. So, if I run that command, oh, and that needs to be a bit narrower, then you can see that expression here, the 2 and 5, become the numerator coefficients, 2s plus 5, and the 1, 6, 11 and 6 become the denominator coefficients. So you can very easily create a transfer function object using tf, using the coefficients in the numerator, followed by the coefficients of the denominator. Now if I want the poles of this, I use this pz map, p for poles, z for zeros. So if I run that command, and you can see there we get the poles, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and a 0, at minus two and a half. Now I'm going to create another transfer function here as a compensator. There it is, so my compensator is going to be 3s plus 1 over s, and then I'm going to use the feedback command to generate gc. Now if I want the mapping from r to y, I use it like this, g times m comma 1. So I run that, and you can see now I've got the closed loop transfer function for this system. Now you wouldn't really like to do that on pen and paper, it's quite messy, but you can see how easy it is with MATLAB. Again, if I want to, I can look at the poles and zeros of this closed loop transfer function, and there they are, and you're never going to do those on pen and paper, you can see they're quite difficult. If you want to look at the responses and see how the behaviour changes from open loop to, clo to closed loop, I've got this command step, and you see I've put the open loop in and the closed loop. So if I run those three commands, and there you can see there's my diagram, the open loop in blue and the closed loop in red. So some conclusions. We've introduced the concept of closed loop transfer functions. These expressions allow us to analyse the closed loop behaviour. Now the resulting behaviour is highly dependent on the feedback law selected and that will be evident from all the numerical examples we've just given. So the following resources are going to look at how we might gain insight from this analysis in order to facilitate systematic selection of those control law parameters.